Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 18 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. In today's tutorial, I'm going to talk about while loops and these are used to automate a piece of code or to run a piece of code multiple times. Now we need this because the strength of computers is to perform these automated tasks much faster than humans. In fact, the key strength of computers is not to think, although artificial intelligence is getting there, but the key strength of computation is to perform a task repeatedly in a very robust way multiple times. And to do these type of automations, there are two types of looping through pieces of code. One is while loop and the other one is for loop. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about while loops. And as the name suggests, it actually performs these computation while certain statement holds true. So let me explain that a bit further by jumping into our spider IDE. So uh, first let's actually start a counter. So I'm going to just say my count is equals to zero. So right now I start with counting. Now let's start counting up. One, two, three, four, five. So to do that, I wanna put this in a while loop. And while, what statement holds true? While my count is greater than 10. And put a colon, just like if and else statement. While my count is greater than 10, do something. So in this case, let's go ahead and uh, print the current count is, okay? Let's go ahead and print this, and let's also print count, right? So all I'm doing is printing the text within these quotations, and also printing the variable count that for now the value of that is zero. Now if I run this, I'll be stuck in an infinite loop. Let me tell you what I mean. So if I go ahead and run this, uh, oh sorry, while count is greater than 10, this should be while count is less than 10. It didn't do anything here because the count is zero and it's greater than, uh, I mean it's less than 10. So my condition was greater than 10, so it, it exited. Now I changed it to count less than 10, which means it's always true. So if I run this code, I should just see, you see how it's actually printing zero all the time. So if, let me go ahead and break it or stop it. And if I scroll up, you see how many times it actually printed the count is zero. Yeah, so every millisecond or how much ever, depending on your processor speed, it's actually printing that the count, uh, the current count is zero. That's because yes, it is always zero. So what's the use of while? Well, in this case, since we are actually using the counter, let's finish it off by basically saying my count equals to count plus one. What does that mean? After printing, do this. So initially my count is zero, so zero plus one is one. So now the while loop continues. One is less than 10. So the current count is one. One plus one is two. So the updated count is two. So two is less than 10, it keeps doing that. So if I run this, you'll see that the current count is zero, one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to nine, because 10 is equal to 10. If I actually say less than or equal to, and print this again, now we should also see a value for uh, 10, right? So this is how a while loop, uh, you know, you can define a while loop and be aware of this getting stuck in this infinite loop. Now. Uh, you can actually uh, use uh, break out of this uh, a couple of ways. Well, you can break out of this and you can also continue this. What I mean by that is, let's say uh, print the current count is, now if I add another condition saying uh, if, again in the previous tutorial you learned about if condition, let's say my count equals to five, then break. I mean, you can say do something else, but I'm gonna say break. That means just stop, I don't want anything. For example, if you're quantifying some sort of a error in your images and you're doing this 10,000 times, okay? Okay, initially the error is uh, large, okay? Go ahead and do whatever that computation is. The error is smaller and smaller and smaller. After a certain point, you don't get any much uh, return, right? I mean, your error gets so small, you're fine. So then you can say if my error is uh, let's say less than some number break. That means it exits out of the loop. So that's how you can relate this to image processing. So let's run this. Now it should actually print zero, one, two, three, four, five. 
okay so at five it says okay your count is five fine i'm breaking i'm not continuing anymore the opposite of that is uh, uh, is called continue so for that let's actually uh, let me uh, copy a few lines of code from my other screen so i don't type in front of you so here instead of break i put continue and i moved my count equals to count plus one up here and you'll see what happens here so when you print it five is actually skipped if five, if the count is five go ahead and continue okay don't do anything and then it's going to print this and then it goes back to uh, 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 count equals to count plus one so basically at count equals to five it actually loops back and then coming back so it never printed the count is five that's what continue is and again uh, you'll you'll realize uh, when to use it again I'll, I'll talk about some of these when we get to the right point uh, when we get to image analysis point in fact okay so what do we do with this information let's finish this off by by typing an equation for for example let's say my what is my uh, equation for conversion of uh, centigrade to fahrenheit let's just do a crude equation sorry 9 over 5 times c mm, where is my plus plus 32 so let's actually automate this. So let's go from negative 40 degrees to plus 40 degrees in Celsius and then print out the corresponding Fahrenheit. OK, so that's what this equation is. So let's actually. Uh, so when we say go from negative 40 to positive 40, my C starts just like my counter. My C starts at negative 40. OK, now I need to type while until what point while my C is less than or equal to 40 until that point do what well do the conversion f equals to let's say uh, 9 over let's just put point because i want to convert this into a float 9 over 5 and why did i put double brackets because i want to multiply this by c and plus 32. i tried to put brackets to make sure if i don't do this then it could be 5 multiplied by c instead of 9 over 5 multiplied by c that's why i just try to do that and uh, what fun is it without printing so let's go ahead and print let's say uh, c or centigrade celsius in f uh, let's spell it out f a h r e n h e i t is okay and let's print out f now Again, if we do this, this will be stuck in infinite loop. Don't forget the counter. So we are increasing C. So let's actually do C equals to C plus. Um, let's do this in terms of fives. OK, every time it increases C by five. By the way, you can write this also as C plus equals to five. This is same as saying C equals to C plus five. C minus equals to five is C is C minus five. OK, so I do not like this notation, although many people use it. So I'm just going to say C equals to C plus five. So let's run this. So here you can see all the way it's going from minus 40 minus 35 to zero. So it makes sense. Zero is 32 Fahrenheit. We know that minus 40 is equal to minus 40. Right. We know this in both Celsius and Fahrenheit scale and 40 is 104 degrees. So here is how you can actually automate an equation through multiple values of, uh, you know, a variable there of, uh, in this case, uh, C. OK, uh, uh, and we are getting printing out Fahrenheit. So uh, again, this this will be useful for image processing. But right now I gave a quick example that everyone can relate to. So in the next video, I'm going to cover the fur loop again to automate over uh, a piece of code multiple times. So let's meet again in the next tutorial. And until then, please practice this while loop on many examples. There is a lot, there are a lot of examples out there on the Internet. So just Google search for while loops in Python and then go ahead and practice them. Thank you very much.